Red here. I want to do a video about uh, bugging out versus bugging in or also known as sheltering in place. So uh, ladies, gentlemen, my often forgotten but not by me 68 whiskeys. Uh, figure we could just get right into it. Um, first off I want to go over is those of y'all that say oh you know I don't have it right now but when the crap hits the fan, I'm going to run to Walmart, or I'm going to run to the sporting goods store, or I'm going to go to my uncle cousin's ranch, or what, what, whatever, to go get this, that, or the other thing. I'm going to tell you right now, if you don't have it right now, you're not going to have it. So, what that means is I don't mean like right now, right now, but if you don't have what you think you might need during a crisis, take steps to actually get it. Um, whether that be uh, firearms, um, food, medical supplies, um, the means to evacuate an area, whether that be you know car, truck, boat, rocket ship, whatever, um, you need to work on getting those things now. Stop putting that off. Uh, so that's just one thing I wanted to just touch on real quick. But the first thing I want to talk about is what's called POU, which is philosophy of use. Um, so those of y'all that have ever watched uh, Nut and Fancy's channel that are 45 minute to hour long freaking episodes that I can never ever get all the way through just because he just kind of drones on and on and on and on. He talks a lot about POU or philosophy of use. Everything that you have for preps needs to have a POU. Um, stop buying things off of wish.com that look cool just because they look cool. Stop wasting your money on those things. Worry about the things you actually need first and then when you think, okay, I can waste money on things, don't. Sell the things you have and upgrade them. Um, so no, another thing I want to talk, on, talk about is I recently made a video about uh, uh, Farfell's Lessons from the Argentinian Economic Collapse. I want to do a correction here. It's actually FERFAL, which is F-E-R-F-A-L. I can't believe I screwed that up, but the, the gentleman's real name is uh, Fernando Aguirre. It's Aguirre spelled A-G-U-I-R-R-E. Um, he has a YouTube channel called The Modern Survivalist. He has a book that you can buy on Amazon, and I think are in some bookstores, called uh, The Modern Survival Manual, Surviving the Economic Collapse. Um, so... I recommend reading his article. That article changed my life. It was it's about uh, between one and a half to two to, if you're a slow reader, three hour read. Um, but it's all about excuse me his experiences of surviving the economic collapse in Argentina that happened in the early 2000s. I do have a video on it. It's my most watched so far, um, but I did want to put that correction in there. It's it's Furfal, not Farfell. Um, Number three I want to talk about is writing things down, printing them out, and, and books. So, you know, those of y'all that have computers and you have, you know, thousands upon thousands of files about, you know, how to uh, do stuff like, you know, how to make machine guns and, you know, how to cook rattlesnake and, and all this other stuff. I recommend actually printing those things out. Um, you know, I have, uh, I have this notebook right here um it's just covered in in duct tape and it has a velcro shut in it that way it's like a binder that i can stuff extra stuff in and uh, you know that's just kind of my idea uh book for you know if i read something and i don't have the means to print it out i can basically just kind of write rough drafts and stuff i'll show you all here Like for example right here is how to dig a water well, hand dig one. Um, let's see, another one. Uh, do it yourself, bars of soap. So it's just basically just instructions on how to make your own soap. Just stuff like that. Um, do it yourself dehydrator. Um, write that stuff down, print it out. Uh, you know, laminate the real important stuff. Because you know, it's a whole lot easier to grab something like this and stuff it in a backpack 
and grabbing you know your desktop computer or even your laptop for that matter and stuffing that into your backpack um, you know laptops you have to you know keep power on in order to to read stuff um, something like this you know you can be sitting you know uh, uh, outside in the woods and crack this open and you know read about all kinds of stuff keep it open keep on looking at it you don't have to worry about a battery um, so another thing, number four, why bug out? Okay, so my recommendations if you're gonna bug out, so like if you live in like the inner city, for example, if you live in a large place like uh, Los Angeles, New York City, Chicago, somewhere, somewhere like that, first off, I don't even recommend living in places like that. Um, in my opinion, you're not much of a survivalist or prepper if you, if you live in one of the mega cities, even Dallas, Fort Worth, um, you're not setting yourself up for success by living in those areas. I understand some of you, it's, you know, you have, you have work there, you have family there, you know, consider living on the outskirts of one of those cities. Um, I know it's hard because, you know, if you buy a house on the outskirts 10, 20 years from now, you know, the, the border of that mega city is just going to be expanded out another 20, 30, 50 miles. So you're back inside the city again, but you need to consider living on the outskirts of, you know, wherever you live, whether it's, you know, town or city, uh, you know, even small villages and stuff like that, um, you know, up north and, and on the reservations and stuff like that, you know, consider living on the, on the outer edge. That way, if something does happen, you can get out a whole lot faster than if you're at smack dab in the middle. Um, of course, if there's like disasters and stuff like that, where you just absolutely have to leave, whether it might be flooding or hurricanes, or if there's, you know, uh, dirty bombs blowing up or something like that. Of course, you know, in those instances, I recommend getting the heck out of there. Uh, so why shelter in place? Well, you know, as we've seen here in 2020 with uh, COVID-19, um, you know, a lot of us have had to shelter in place, been asked to shelter in place. Those of us have been put in quarantine because either we've contracted COVID-19 or a close associate of ours, a uh, business associate, family, or whatever, has they've contacted COVID-19, so we were supposed to sit in for two weeks. You know, that's that's bugging in. Um, you know, and the biggest, the hardest part about bugging in is, is food, and we'll talk about that here in a little bit, but also just pure entertainment. Um, you know, luckily, we've had kind of like a soft apocalypse here in 2020. I don't know if that's getting us ready for the hard apocalypse in 2021. Hopefully not. But, you know, entertaining yourself, whether it be through t uh, television or, you know, streaming services or playing games on your computer or reading books or, you know, learning new skills, uh, trying new hobbies. Um, you know, again, try to have stuff written down and printed out because that way, you know, say there's power outages and or stuff like that. Um, which is very possible in, say, an economic collapse. Um, you have your rolling blackouts that can last for days, for example. Um, if you have all that stuff on your computer, it would be difficult, not impossible, but difficult to access that stuff. Um, you know, have that stuff printed out or, or written down. That way, you know, you can sit there and, and teach yourself a new, uh, a new hobby or a new skill when the, when the lights are out. Um, so... Food preps I want to talk about real real quick. It just really depends on if you're bugging in or bugging out. You know, the, I've known over the years a lot of people that have bought cases upon cases upon cases of MREs. And they say, oh, when the crap hits the fan, you know, I'm going to go to my bunker and I'm just going to survive on MREs. Please don't do that. <laughs> and I'll tell you why. Um, I have MREs. I don't have a lot of them, but I do have some. Uh, but this one, this particular one right here, the, the number nine beef stew. Um, in total, this is 1,250 calories for one. If you're eating two or, th two or three of these a day, that's over 3,000 calories, okay? Um, if you're just sitting on your butt watching TV or reading or whatever, that's going to turn into a brick in your intestine, and you can have what's called an intestinal blockage, and... If there's little to no medical in your area, no hospitals, clinics, or anything like that, um, you know that blockage can cause a rupture, 
and you can go into sepsis and die, you know, in your in your living room from eating MREs. MREs are designed for combat troops on the battlefield to eat something very quickly and, and have the energy for the rest of the day to be running around with, you know, 70 to over 100 pounds worth of kit on their backs, you know, on the battlefield. That's what MREs are designed for. MREs are not designed to consume, you know, in your bunker or your living room or whatever, just sitting on your butt. So when it comes to food, uh, you know, plan on having s something else to eat besides, or at least in conjunction with MREs. Drink lots and lots and lots and lots and lots of fluids. Um, you know, have coffee, uh, have, have tea, you know, other kind of diuretics that will cause this to pass through your colon <laughs> a lot faster if you're going to do something like that. Um, let's see. So when it comes to bags, so there's, you know, bug out bags, bail out bags, and get home bags. You know, the end all for everybody is, you know, the bug out bag. And, oh, you know, look at all this stuff that I can cram into a bug out bag, blah, blah, blah. You know, and a lot of people think when it comes to bugging out, they're just going to go live out in the wilderness as a lone wolf. Um, but they don't even consider their wife and children. Um, you know, and oftentimes they don't even really consider themselves. You know, these people that, you know, for example, I've got a little bit of thickness around my middle. Um, you know, if, if you go camping, for example, uh, which is basically what you'd be doing if you'd be bugging out in the wilderness for weeks or months or until the crisis is over, you know, after you run out of your initial amount of food that you have in your bug out bag, especially if you're going to say like a national park or something like that, where a lot of other people, um, may consider going, it may be difficult to find more food. Um, and, and you'll quickly run out and you'll be losing a ridiculous amount of weight. Um, those of y'all have never watched Into the Wild, consider watching that. Um, it's not one of my favorite movies, uh, in my opinion. The, the, the Kid, which is based on a real life events uh, of, uh, of Super Tramp, is what he called himself. Um, I, th I think he was an idiot. But, you know, it's, it's still a good hard lesson for people that haven't put a lot of thought into just going into the middle of nowhere and trying to survive just for for you know grins um you know in my opinion when it comes to bugging out you really need to think hard about it maybe even think about you know if you're going to bug out go to a friend or family's um rural residence whether it be a farm or a ranch um or maybe just to you know another person's house on the opposite side of town um you know, go where there's already resources. And on top of that, um, you know, have the preps in place where if you do show up at someone else's door, you're not just using all of their stuff. Um, you know, I have some really good friends and they have, they spend a lot of time and money prepping and a lot of their friends and family, it's, it's stuck in their head that, Oh, if something ever pops off. I'm going to go to your house. Um, you know, that pisses those people off. It, it really does. Um, you know, spend a little bit of time and effort and money and have your own preps at that person's house. If that if that's your plan, first off, talk to them about it and say, hey, you know, if something really pops off, I know y'all are set up really well. I know y'all plan on sheltering in place or bugging in. Is it cool if I show up? And, and you know, if I do that, you know, can I have some stuff here? That way I'm not just consuming what you've acquired um whether you know whether it be in a couple totes or a couple bags or whatever um so let's see so security so everyone you know i'm wants to talk talk about guns when it comes to security um and that's all great I, i've got guns i like guns um but you know besides that something to also consider is is night vision um those of y'all that uh you know, excuse me, there's a fly on my camera. Those of y'all that have been in the military or law enforcement or whatever, or whatever know the benefits of, of night vision, but, you know, going outside with a flashlight and, and doing your sweeps and stuff like that, if there is somebody, um, you know, watching 
your your residence or where you're living or or sheltering place at or whatever you know they're gonna see that beam a lot whereas if you have something like night vision um unless they have night vision too which is more than likely probably not you know they're not gonna see what's called the ir or infrared signatures of you know of your beam coming out of your uh, of your night vision you know so you can just you know pop a squat somewhere and just keep an eye out and you're gonna see a lot more that way than if you're just walking around with a flashlight another thing too is watches um or you know and 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 taking ships so again a lot of people want to sit there and, and lone wolf this stuff and you know fur fowl and i we really don't recommend that you're really going to want to have some kind of network of people um you know you're going to want to shelter in place with people and especially if things are are really bad off you're going to want to have you know anywhere between six to ten people that you're that you're sheltering in place with especially just for for shifts for doing watches so you know, watches can be stuff like, you know, every two hours, you know, every eight hours, uh, you know, 12 hours on, 12 hours off. You know, you can work that stuff out. But nobody can be on guard for 24 hours a day. It's impossible. Stop telling yourself that. It's just not possible. Um, and let's see, uh, supply runs. So another thing is if you are sheltering in place, you know, whenever you say you're just going to go get some beer from the store or, you know, you have to, uh, you know, go further than the gas station because gas stations are no longer a thing, uh, you know, and, and, you know, some of y'all might, you know, kind of chuckle at that, but after like, say, um, hurricanes and stuff like that in Galveston, um, or, you know, Biloxi, Mississippi or down in Florida and stuff like that, you know, uh, there's plenty of instances of people that sheltered in place during those emergencies, excuse me, those disasters. And, you know, all these businesses are shut up, but these people need food. These people need medical attention or whatever. And no, none of these businesses are open. So these are all things you need to consider, um, you know, before this stuff happens. Uh, you know, where can I acquire the stuff that I need? You know, maybe it's not a necessarily 100% legal way, but you, these are things you need to scout out now and figure out now. And that may take more than just searching around on Google for stuff. You may actually have to drive around. Um, you know, just for example, my uh, my last ditch ammunition project, driving around town trying to find out where those, where I can buy more of those paper caps because where I purchased them before ran out and they have no intention of, of stocking anymore. So, you know, I drove around town going to toy stores, going to gas stations, going to dollar stores until I finally found a new supply of where those, uh, those paper caps are. Um, and, you know, I had to take the time to do that. I couldn't just sit there and scroll around on my phone. Um, so another thing is, is uh, medical. So, you know, earlier we were talking about food and MREs and stuff like that and the damage that they can do to your system. You know, consider having diuretics and stool softeners. Uh, consider having, uh, you know, Imodium, Pepto-Bismol. Um, just be able to be able to treat yourself for any kind of food sickness um, or digestive tract sickness. Um, you know, on top of that, you know, have what's called an IFAC, uh, an individual first aid kit. I'm going to be doing a video on that here pretty soon with a friend of mine. Um, you know, have the ability to treat yourself medically um, just because hospitals may not be open or, you know, just in case you don't want to go to a hospital for whatever reason. Um, you know, try not to depend on other people. Absolutely network with other people. Absolutely group up with other people. But have the means to take care of yourself and be an asset to that group that you're trying to join. Don't join a group, you know, expecting them to take care of you. Expect, you know, join that group as an asset, not an asshat. Um... And the last thing I want to go over is, is caches. Um, now, some people call them caches. That's not how it's pronounced. It's caches. You know, and you can have small caches, you know, like, for example, just a small Tupperware container, put some stuff in it, 
And, you know, whether you bury it in the ground or leave it at a friend's house, you can have ammunition in there, medical stuff in there, just some snacks in there, whatever. You can have that stuff inside your vehicle. You can have that stuff inside other people's vehicles. You can have that stuff buried in the ground. You, you can have large caches. You can have stuff in five-gallon buckets. You can have stuff in 55-gallon drums. You have stuff in large totes, large duffel bags. I mean, there's all kinds of different sizes that you can you know, do with caches, but I absolutely recommend doing that because when you have everything just bundled up at your house, you know, say your house burns down, say your house falls into a sinkhole, say, you know, for whatever reason you're forced to leave your house, say, you know, you're out and about and something happens, um, you know, the tyrants are coming or whatever and they know, you know, where you live, you can't get to your house to go get all your preps and your supplies, but you have other preps and supplies in other areas, whether it be other people's houses or whatever, um, you know, it's just good to, to kind of move your stuff around. And on top of that, check your caches. Make sure your friends aren't stealing from you. Make sure, you know, strangers aren't walking up and stealing your stuff out of the ground. Um, Anyways, this is kind of a, a, a quick and dirty version of bugging in versus bugging out. Um, if you enjoyed this video, please like it, subscribe, ring the bell, uh, go visit the comment, say hello to Johnston. I'm sure he's already probably dropped a comment in the comments for me. Anyways, thank you all very much.